Our acquaintance with the dinosaurs is comparatively recent, dating from the early part of the 19th century, and, in America at least, the date may be set at 1818, when the first dinosaur remains were found in the Valley of the Connecticut, although they naturally were not recognized as such, nor had the term been devised. The first dinosaur to be formally recognized as representing quite a new order of reptiles was the carnivorous megalosaur, found near Oxford, England in 1824. The smallest of the dinosaurs whose acquaintance we have made were little larger than chickens. The largest claim the distinction of being the largest known quadrupeds that have walked the face of the earth. Unlike man and the higher vertebrates, reptiles and fishes do not have a maximum standard of size, which is soon reached and rarely exceeded, but continue to grow throughout life so that the size of a turtle, a crocodile, or a dinosaur tells something of the duration of its life. And the spinal cord with its supply of nerve substance doubtless looked after the mere mechanical functions of life. And while even the spinal cord is in many cases quite small, in some places, particularly in the sacral region, it is subject to considerable enlargement. This is notably true of Stegosaurus, where the sacral enlargement is 20 times the bulk of the puny brain, a fact noted by Professor Marsh and seized upon by the newspapers, which announced that he had discovered a dinosaur with a brain in its pelvis. Judging from our own standpoint and the small amount of intellect apparent in some humans with much larger brains, these big reptiles must have known just about enough to have eaten when they were hungry. Anything more was superfluous. Brains were a potent factor in the struggle for supremacy, for though these reptiles were giants in size, dominating the earth through mere brute force, they were dwarfs in intellect. The smallest human brain that is thought to be compatible with life itself weighs a little over 10 ounces. The smallest that can exist with reasoning powers is 2 pounds. What do we find among dinosaurs? Thespesius or Cleosaurus, which may have walked where Baltimore now stands, was 25 feet in length and stood a dozen feet high in his bare feet, had a brain smaller than a man's clenched fist, weighing less than one pound. Brontosaurus, in some respects the biggest brute that ever walked, was but little better off, and Triceratops and his relatives, creatures having twice the bulk of an elephant, weighing probably over 10 tons, possessed a brain weighing not over two pounds. Like other reptiles, living and extinct, Thespesius was continually renewing his teeth, so that as fast as one tooth was worn out, it was replaced by another, a point wherein Thespesius had a decided advantage over ourselves. On the other hand, as there was a reserve supply of something like 400 teeth in the lower jaw alone, what an opportunity for the toothache. For a long time, our knowledge of dinosaurs was very imperfect and literally fragmentary, depending mostly upon scattered teeth, isolated vertebrae, or fragments of bone picked up on the surface, or casually encountered in some mine or quarry. Now, however, thanks mainly to the labors of American paleontologists, thanks also to the rich deposits of fossils in our western states, we have an extensive knowledge of the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs were by no means confined to North America. 
although the western United States seemed to have been their headquarters, but ranged pretty much over the world, for their remains have been found in every continent, even in far off New Zealand. Most of our large museums have on exhibition fine specimens of many dinosaurs, comprising skulls, limbs, and large portions of their skeletons. The American Museum of Natural History, New York, has the largest and finest display. The first actual skeleton of a dinosaur to be mounted in this country was the splendid Claosaurus at the Yale University Museum, where other striking pieces are also to be seen. The mounting of this Claosaurus, which is 29 feet long and 13 feet high, took an entire year. The United States National Museum is particularly rich in examples of the great horned Triceratops. The Field Columbian Museum and the Universities of Wyoming and Colorado all have good collections. <laughs> 